Hi everybody. So I suppose a case could be made that arguably the parabolic reflector is at the heart of concentrated solar thermal. Certainly for things like oh, solar cookers, solar barbecues, solar kettles, it is. Whether it's in a dish or a trough, it's a very important aspect. And of course you see lots of people making them in lots of different ways. And each of them, well they've got their merits and their demerits. Quite a popular one is to take a mylar sheet and either subject it to pressure or vacuum to form a parabolic reflector. It works really, really well, but it is a mylar sheet. So <laughs> it's not particularly hard wearing. And in order to get the pressure on or the vacuum formed and maintain that vacuum, then it's a bit difficult and, and it doesn't really last very long. But it is certainly impressive and it certainly works. Other ways that you find are to make formers and then make separate petal like sections and then to bend those sections and glue them together. And other ways are to find preformed parabolic curbs, parabolic dishes or troughs, and just coat them with a reflective layer. Now there's lots of reflective layers around. This is a quite a cool one. This is alum, sticky back aluminium. And you get it for heating, venting, uh, ventilation and air conditioning applications and basically it's nice and shiny and it's sticky so all you do is cut it to length, peel it off and stick it down. Brilliant. You can get this kind of thing. This is um, a metal foil. It's actually a plastic that's got a sticky back on it. Decal sell it and it comes in a whole variety including this nice silvery mirror form and there's a, a silvery copper form. I think that that would actually make quite a nice uh, mirror that probably would be a bit of a product. I quite like that anyway. And then of course you can get good old kitchen foil. Here we go extra strong kitchen foil and that's nice and shiny. For that you need to glue it down and so some kind of spray adhesive and you cut your sections off of that and then just glue it to the surface as a parabolic surface. So there's a, a ton of ways of approaching this but some of them are a little less desirable than others, some of them take a bit more effort than others and some of them are not very replicatable which is what makes them difficult. Now of the most replicatable it's probably the Cut some petals and fold up the flower. Probably one of the simplest ways of doing it is to grab yourself some backing material, whether it's cardboard, whether it's plastic, whether it's a bit of metal that you're going to bend up, wherever it is, something that's about a metre by a metre, and first draw it in half, draw it in four, draw it in eight, draw it in 16, and you'll get 16 divisions at 22 and a half degrees apart. Then we need to draw four circles. And those four circles have a radius of 75 millimetres, 254 millimetres, 400 millimetres and 528 millimetres which is that largest circle. You join those up and you create four circles to create this. Now when we've done that what we're basically going to do is cut that out like the petals of a flower and we're going to fold those up and in order to do that we need to know how much of those petals to cut out. Well clearly R1 doesn't get cut at all, R1 is zero. R2, the distance away from one of those lines, R2 is 11 millimetres, R3 it's 29 millimetres and R4 it's 50 millimetres and it'll form you this. You get this beautiful petal shape and cut down one of those edges and then you'll be able to fold those up in according with bends and the dotted lines that you can see and they will fold up to make your parabola. Now at this point of course we haven't put anything reflective on it. If we want to put something reflective on it what we need to do is cut some little trapeziums like this and then we can stick those trapeziums onto our petals and then we can fold it up. Once you've covered that in your reflective material, folded it up and glued it, taped it, screwed it, whatever it is to um, fix it together, you'll make yourself a parabolic reflector. Now parabolic reflectors already exist of course because you can get them as sky dishes and people quite often use a sky dish that they cover again with a reflective material and that makes a really nice parabolic reflector. So you can look around for things that are already a preformed parabolic reflector. So something like a wok is going to do it, something like a sky dish and I have this, which is a Pennsylvania fire pit. Cost me £30 in a local DIY store. Now, 
if I think about that, that seems like a lot of money to spend on a bit of bent metal. But then if you look at something like the former, you're going to need to make a Mylar one. I mean, the Mylar itself costs about one pound. If you intend on producing a few hundred of them, then making a former is really nice. But making a former and all the vacuum equipment, it's going to cost you a lot more than just sticking plastic onto a piece of bent metal. So I'm going to take some of this stuff and stick it onto my Pennsylvania fire pit to make my parabolic reflector. But there are a million ways of doing it. So there we go, there it is in the sun. Now let's try and do that old age demonstration and burn something. Okay, there it is angled into the sun. Now you can see the focus. See that? The light just comes together. And where that light is, look at it going already. That is some heat being generated there. And of course this is concentrated solar. So what we do is put our cook pot right there or whatever it else <laughs> we wanted to boil, burn or cook. <laughs> Okay, so there you go. Now, I quite like the copper here because it's got that sort of look about it. And it's more than likely what the Greeks and ancient Egyptians used, a good old bit of polished copper. Now, in a square metre, roughly about a kilowatt of sunlight energy falls. So we can collect that and use that and this concentrates it, which is why we get that dramatic burning effect. But the real takeaway from this is, um, to be honest, it's really non-critical. It's such a huge variety of ways of doing it. If it's not quite a parabola, it doesn't matter. It being as reflective as possible really matters, but you've got a huge range of materials you can choose from, including aluminium, reflective plastic, glass, mirrors, little squares, just mind boggling in what you can actually make this and how lax it is in the general shape of it. And to find the focal point, you just hold a bit of paper above it and see where it concentrates. So piece of cake to make a thing like this for things like solar cookers or um, concentrated solar thermal or boiling for a steam engine and all those kind of things are going to be adaptable to something like that. So I wanted to go through it mostly to show you um, what huge range of materials can be used, how easy it is to actually do. If you happen across something like a bin lid that will be basically what you want, that's going to be fine as well. And it can be made in, oh, half an hour or so if you use sticky back plastic. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.